In today's show, we're going to be talking LA Clippers for the upcoming season with William Updike of the Locked On Clippers podcast. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We're going to be talking LA Clippers uh, with one of the hosts of the Locked On Clippers podcast coming up right now. So stay tuned. It's coming up. Hope uh, Hope you guys are excited. All right, let's bring him in now. The host of the Locked On Clippers podcast, Will Updike, is here. Will, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so we're going to talk LA Clippers here. Of course, the big thing hanging over them is the absence of their their best play. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But as we do in all of these shows, Will, we'll start off by you telling us what your projected opening night starting five is for the LA Clippers. So it's a little bit in flux, and I think there's still some question marks as to the availability of both Serge Ibaka and Ivica Zubats for opening night. But I think what we're looking at uh, is Reggie Jackson, Uh, as the starting point guard, Paul George. I'm going to go with Nick Batum at the small forward position. I think they're going to go with the vet over Terrence Mann, which a lot of fans are kind of clamoring for. I think Marcus Morris is going to be starting at the power forward. And I'm assuming that they're going to go with Avica Zubats uh, if health is intact. What's um what's the issue with Zubat? So obviously Ibaka had that uh, sore back, which kept him out for about yeah three months. Uh, what's Zubat's issue at the moment? So he has an MCL strain. Uh, I, it's I, I believe it was just a grade one initially, uh, but there hasn't been any other news. And I I mean I don't want to get too worried about it, but like an, initially Kawhi's injury was reported as a strain, and then we found out in the off season you know later that. Uh, He had actually undergone surgery for a partial tear. So there's just, just with this organization, you you do have some questions as to sort of the transparency of injuries and and the timetable for returns. Oh, absolutely. Look, you you got the Kawhi one. There's the Serge Ibaka one. And now there's this uh, Zubats one, which again, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that there was this MCL concern over him heading into uh, opening night. So that's interesting. Now you've got Nick Batum there. And as you said, Terrence Mann is the other option that they, they could throw into that slot and leave Batum in that bench role. Is there any thought that perhaps Eric Bledsoe could slide in and they play Paul George at a position that probably suits Paul George more and that's playing at the three? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's definitely, uh, I, I think it's definitely an option. It, the question mark just becomes then like, what is that backcourt off the bench? Yeah. Uh, it, it depends on how you can stagger people. I think initially, uh, that Bledsoe is probably going to be manning the, the second unit as that six man, probably the first sub in. Uh, but it's not out of the, the realm of feasibility or Ty Lue, you know, who does love to, to play around with lineups to have him in that lineup. I, I think that there is some value to having like a traditional sort of uh, backcourt of two actual guards and maybe having Paul George back at his natural position. Uh, and then it, it you, you can then move Nick Batum to the bench where, as we saw through the playoffs, uh, especially when Paul George is off, is, is on the bench, Batum is really needed to stabilize those lineups on, on both ends of the floor. Um, it, and especially with no Kawhi this season, uh, or at least for a majority of it, what this team is able to pull off in the minutes without Paul George is, you know, it, it's live or die for what their season is going to be. Yeah, and look, if you start Bledsoe, then you don't have, I guess, a traditional point guard as such coming off the bench. But you've got Terrence Mann who can handle it, Luke Kennard can handle it, Nick Batum can handle it in that scenario as well. And they can all, I guess, get by in in that type of scenario. And if you stagger, Paul George can handle the ball and then Jackson and Bledsoe. There are plenty of ball handlers. Um, just no sort of traditional point guard, of course, with Rondo gone, Lou Williams gone last season, uh, Patrick Beverly now gone as well. So it's not quite the same looking uh, group. So let's have a look at your projected bench rotation then. We think we've mentioned most of these names already, but you want to go through that for us will yeah sure so uh eric bledsoe and then kind of give i mean like interchangeably terrence Mann or luke Kennard. uh i mean i think terrence Mann is because of his size maybe more adept at the small forward position at least guarding them 
Uh, and then you have Justice Winslow and Serge Ibaka. Now, Serge could return to the starting lineup. I, you know, that is very much still in play. I think if Eric Bledsoe is going to be running that second unit, that there's value to keeping Serge on the bench just to have a little bit more spacing. Uh, you know, with the addition of Justice Winslow, like there's there's not a lot of shooting there to speak of. And his numbers from three, have, you know, cratered uh, the last two seasons, though he has been getting over some injuries. So, you know, with Bledsoe not not really that effective from deep uh, and Justice not out there, uh, not that effective from deep. It, I think that there's there's some value to having a little bit more versatility uh, at the five in that lineup. Yeah, I agree. Like, Winslow's a terrible shooter. Bledsoe's a pretty bad man. I think had some decent numbers, but I wouldn't trust him as a great shooter or a good shooter or a high-volume shooter. Canard is that guy, of course, who you yeah. trust to go out there and he can throw up, you know, lots and lots of three-point attempts and they go in at a pretty high rate and then a Barker can be that other that other helpful spacing type player out there. But uh, I wouldn't be trusting your yeah, Bledsoe man and Winslow to provide good shooting despite what may have happened at past times in their career in terms of, you know, shooting percentage numbers. I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of that being a... Uh, Oh, that being anything real, but I'll tell you what is real, Will, and that is the fact that football is back. College football has started. NFL is starting next week, and the best place for you to place your bets is at Bet Online. Get all the updated odds, props, contests, including online's biggest half-million-dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL survivor contest open now at Bet Online. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the season opener Thursday, September 9th between the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose... You get refunded up to $25 for new customers who sign up using the promo code NFL100. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, from football to basketball, boxing, or even your favorite Vegas casino games. BetOnline allows you to take advantage of all of their great offers for the 2021 season. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. Also, it's, it's a familiar problem clutter around TV and streaming services. But, you know, you've got one device you can watch your games on. You've got another one where you stream your favorite shows. You watch sports highlights on your phone, and then you've got your neighbors log in for another streaming service. It's, it's just all over the place. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together, and it is called Direct TV Stream. And it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite TV shows, sports, and movies all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, so let's go into talking, Will, about injuries. We've spoken about as uh, yeah, there's emergency vehicles coming to coming to arrest us for talking about Clippers injury reports and letting too much uh, letting too much information out. Um, Kawhi Leonard torn ACL. Okay, we we know that's going to cost him yeah a big chunk of time. Partially torn ACL. Are you expecting Kawhi to play any, let's say, more than 10 regular season games? You know, I, I mean, like, optimistically, we could maybe see his return after the All-Star break. Um, I, I don't really see them pushing him bef before that, especially because we have a brutal road trip uh, leading into the All-Star break that... I just don't I don't think that they would try to rush him back. It, it's hard to say with Kawhi, right? Because, I mean, you know, we know how his tenure ended with the Spurs. Uh, there were some some disagreements about sort of, you know, what level he was at and whether or not he was, you know, fully ready to play. And I think the Clippers are not going to make that same mistake. I mean, they're going to trust his team. Uh, you know, certainly there were reports even in the playoffs that uh, things were not clear uh, to the training staff. Uh, and the front office at all times. So I, I think that they're fine giving him the space that he needs to recover. Um, I, you know, like I think conservatively, I do not think that he will be back for 10, for 10 games of the regular season. Uh, I would love to be wrong about that, but I, I just think that, you know, he is, he's not going to rush it. You know, he, he was a Kobe fan. And I think that like that, it's like one of those things that you saw the way his career ended with just injuries piling on top of injuries. And like, I, I you know, I think that he's trying to avoid, a, you know, sort of a similar thing. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any chance he's back in February, to be honest. So that, that's the all-star break. Like he tore his ACL in June. So that's what, Mm -hmm. eight months and this guy is going to be cautious as he should and the Clippers should be as well like they're not that bad of a team without him that they're going to be struggling you know to, to even get into the playoff type consideration like Paul George is really good like he can help you know, push this team through and, and get into a solid position 
in the um uh, in in the playoffs while they wait for Kawhi to come back. And maybe he comes back at the end of March, the start of April. It's only ten days in April in the regular season anyway, and they work him back in. I just don't see there's any way coming back from an ACL, which you know, traditionally is a twelve month injury. Yes, some people do get back in ten, eleven months now, but that's it didn't happen in March last year. This injury, this happened in June in the playoffs. So we are, I'd be. I think it's more likely he plays zero regular season games than he plays more than 10 regular season games for this uh, for this upcoming season. But what about Serge Ibaka? What, do we actually ever find out what the injury was, apart from a sore back that kept him out for three months? There was reports that it was a stress fracture, and then he came back, and then he got out again. So, so what's his status? Uh, I still don't know like the full extent of the injury that, that led to surgery. There was just kind of like more uh, sort of mercurial sort of reporting that, that that we received in the media uh before they announced the that the surgery had happened so look i i mean the understanding is uh loosely that he is going to be available opening night uh that hasn't been said officially anywhere uh but he is you know like back in the gym he you know he is uh in some capacity in on-court activities i don't know what the intensity level of that is uh but i i think the general consensus is that he's going to be ready to go opening night. And part of the things that I uh, I think that is like making Clipper fans hopeful that that is the case is that the Clippers haven't gone out and, and gotten a third center or, or somebody deeper on the bench to sort of fill in. If either one of these guys aren't ready to go at the start of the season uh, in seasons past, we've had Patrick Patterson uh, able to sort of fill that role uh, when injuries crop up. And then, you know, last year we, we had a little bit of success with DeMarcus Cousins in, in limited runs. Neither of those guys have, have been re-signed to the team yet. Uh, and, you know, there's nobody else uh, sort of in the in the wake uh, if one of these guys is not available to go at the jump of the season. Let's move into some other questions now. Um, do you think the Clippers... Well, I've got here this question. Will they treat it as a lost season? Now, again, I still think they're good enough to make the playoffs, but in terms of your desperation stakes, if they are in the situation where they're the ninth seed in March, they're not going to be pushing guys through injuries and playing huge minutes yeah, and, and rushing Kawhi back yeah, in order to salvage what whatever's happening this season. They've got Kawhi and Paul George signed to long-term deals. So, again, I don't think lost season is necessarily the correct terminology, but I think they're... you know see what happens this year and, and then push it to next year to be back to being title contenders. Is that how you're viewing their approach and, and what they did in the off season and the moves that they've made? Yeah, for sure. But I mean, like I'm with you, I, to me, it's the opposite of a lost year. I mean, this to me is like a house money year. Yeah, okay. The guys last year, I mean, they achieved even, you know, barring injuries, uh, something this franchise had never gotten to before uh, in that Western conference finals appearance. And yeah, I, I mean, like I, I think that, internally like there is still hope that this team can make a playoff push we saw what they were able to do last season but to me this is a year where really like you get a chance to develop other guys I mean we get to see what this team looks like uh for a full regular season with Paul George sort of leading the charge with his role like a little bit more clearly defined uh I'm curious to see what he's going to be able to pull off I think that you know, some of the issues that we've had with the with the tandem of Paul George and, and Kawhi Leonard in the regular season is Paul George can sort of slip into a more passive role. Uh, so I'm curious to see how he can kind of develop, uh, you know, certainly his playmaking will, will have to take a jump. But this also gives us a chance to develop some of the younger guys uh, to get this team back to like a, a full contender status once Kawhi returns. And the guys that I'm looking at in particular is, you know, Terrence Mann, who had a great playoffs. Uh, I still have some questions as to, you know, whether he's he's going to be able to make a jump in this regular season. I certainly have hopes to, uh, have hopes that he's going to be able to do it, uh, but it remains to be seen. And then the other thing, the $6 million question is Luke Kennard. Uh, his extension kicks in this year. He got he got four for sixty four. There's some incentives laden in there, so it's you know it, it could end up being a little bit less. But the thing is, is like last year he he was barely a part of this offense. I think he attempted something like seven field goal attempts a game. Uh, there there seemed to be not a lot of ideas on how to put him in the best places, which I kind of fully don't understand. Seeing as like he's a you know plus forty percent shooter. Uh, he's, you know, pretty good with the ball in his hands. He makes sense as sort of a Lou Williams light off the bench to just kind of give you some uh, some some scoring and a little bit of charge. But 
it remains to be seen what they're going to be able to do with him. And I mean, you know, they traded away those second, a uh, couple of those seconds that they got in the canard trade. Uh, and if he's at that $16 million sort of uh, asking price and they're unable to find a more like defined role for him, I, I'm going to view this as some pretty poor asset management, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, he didn't play very much at all last season. I thought he started to play well in the playoffs and maybe that carries over into this regular season. I didn't mind the contract when they um when they signed it. It obviously looks terrible at this point, but I still think there's more that Canard can give. And there is that opportunity. As you said, they've cleared that runway with bench guards for him to have a significant role this season without Kawhi. They're going to need some of that offense, but we'll see what he's able to bring. Um, Reggie Jackson was really, really good in the playoffs. Um, really stepped up, played a lot more minutes than he had in previous seasons uh, with the Clippers, re-signed with them now. He's going to be their starting point guard this season. Any threat of Patrick Beverly has obviously been wiped out because Beverly is gone. Jackson was able to play at a high usage, high efficiency level in the playoffs, where in the past with the Clippers, he'd been playing like his 24, 26, 27 minute a night role. So are we expecting you know, full-time starter high usage, high efficiency Reggie Jackson. Is that a possibility that he can carry that form over or at least that roll over into the regular season? So I think so. Uh, Looking at last season, he was uh, the majority of the time the starting point guard for the Clippers due to availability issues with Patrick Beverly, which is you know one of the reasons that trade ended up happening. But you know he did lead one of the most efficient offenses in the NBA, and now that looks a little bit different with Kawhi Leonard in it, of course. But I, I do think that he's going to be able to step up. I, I don't know if he's going to have to be uh, sort of an 18 points per game kind of guy like he was in the playoffs. I think that his playmaking is going to have to to take a little bit of a jump. Uh, but he also is a solid threat off ball. So I think that it will sort of depend on how they run those backcourt rotations because, you know, he he can also have Bledsoe to take some of the playmaking sort of duties off of him. And, and certainly Paul George, I'm assuming, is going to be taking on uh, even more of those duties as well. But, you know, I, I, I have high hopes for Reggie Jackson. Um, you know, uh, the efficiency from three was great. I think that he can make a jump from two with a little bit more like I keep saying, like a little bit more of a defined role. There were games last season where he would find out uh, that he would be starting as, as when Pat was a late scratch. You know, he would be finding out minutes before the game that he would be the starting point guard that night. And generally he was able to stay ready, step up and take care of it. So I, I have confidence uh, that while he might not be like an elite point guard in the Western Conference, I do think with the talent around him, he is going to be able to step up uh, and, and have a solid season again. It's that time where I ask my uh, guests, Will, the, the question that everyone wants to know the answer to is that, do you know how to fix your own car? <laughs> I do not. I, I, I don't even know where to get parts. I know where to get parts because if you are obviously like me and have no idea, but you know, maybe you're looking to dabble in that. Rock Auto is the place where you need to go. You don't want to wait, Will. You don't want to waste time going to a local chain auto parts store. That's a waste of time, a waste of money, and you might feel intimidated by dealing with that bloke behind the counter who's going to talk down to you because you don't know what you're doing. Go to rockauto.com. Find the parts that you need for your car or truck. Brake, pa- brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Rock Auto has been in business for 20 years serving do-it-yourselfers online, and their prices are always reliably low. There's no need to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts. So go and explore their easy to use website and find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. And in there, how did you hear about us box? Right, locked on so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. And then the second question that I got to ask guests, Will, is what's your favorite flavor of Built Bar? Ooh, I don't, lately I'm kind of digging the German chocolate. German chocolate. Wow. Okay. That is like probably my least favorite, but that's, that's the good thing about Bill Bar, Bill Bar. Freedom of choice. You can choose whatever flavor is your best. And if you don't know what your favorite is, mine's cookies and cream for the record. You can get a mix box, nine flavors, two of each, and you get to taste all of the delicious rainbow of flavors that Bill Bar has. But it's not just about taste. It's not just about how delicious they are because they're also healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Will, I've got a question for you as a red-blooded American man. I come out here and I say there's 17 to 18 grams of protein. Do you know what a gram is? Do you know how that, if that makes sense at all? Uh, I, know, I, I, I know that that's a good amount of protein. It is a good uh, amount, but- yes. Uh, but what uh, what a gram is, I, I I can't really fathom it beyond what's on the back of, of packaging. One gram is a uh, one thousandth of a kilogram, if that helps, which I know it doesn't at all. I'm trying to think how Oof. to... Uh, and a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So there you go. Okay. 
Okay, so it's uh one one thousandth of two point two pounds. All yeah. right, yeah, that uh, yeah, that seems good. I think it's uh, I don't even. I was gonna say I think it's something to do with ounces. I'm not even sure how it works. I think thirty grams is one ounce. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But we're talking healthy bars here for Built Bar, and if you use our promo code Locked fifteen, you can get fifteen percent off at Built.com. So go to Built.com, use the promo code Locked fifteen, and save fifteen percent off, and get all of those healthy grams into your body. Well. Got one more question for you here before we let you go. And uh, it's regarding the starting center position. If it's a Zubats who started at times, then plays reserve minutes, and then Serge Ibaka came in and started, then if if it's went back in and started and started all the playoffs because Serge was out, and you've projected here that Zubats probably will be the starting center, but there's a difference between being the starting center and being a starting center. So you can be the starting center and play 20 minutes, but you can be the starting center and play 30 minutes a night. Is this his time to pull away and have that larger sort of role rather than being a starter in name only type scenario where the backups come in and play more minutes? Can he finally take that big step? I I mean, if he's going to do it, this is going to have to be the year. Um, you know, he he's had sort of the the ceremonial starter position where, yeah, he, he does play like 15, 20 minutes, uh, but he's, you know, he's not the closer. Um, and, you know, that's been a thing since Doc was still the coach of this team. So we'll see, you know, like I am hoping with, if he gets an increased role, he can turn into like a double, double guy. He's not that far away right now. Um, we've seen improvements in his finishing a little bit, although he can still be stone handed at times. I, I think the, the thing that has to happen is regardless of, of where they keep him, uh, it has to be consistent. I, I think my biggest takeaway of where Zoo has struggled in the playoffs is he really struggles to adjust on the fly to uh, to, to different game plans. Uh, and I I just think that you know if, to use him best, like he has to just he has to either be the 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 center off the bench, and that's what his role is going to be like. Period or he stays the starter. And then you know like as far as getting to that thirty minutes per night thing, you know I. The rebounding, uh, I think, is going to have to take a step up. And, you know, defensively, you know, he's he's very solid. He's still just going to struggle in pick-and-roll coverages. And in the Western Conference, you, you're just going to see a lot of backcourts that, you know, are going to be able to punish you for that. Absolutely. So he's a guy that always has interesting fantasy value, but we just want that little bit of extra extra minutes. So two, three, four extra minutes, we want that extra to come in. Maybe it's the time this year. I'm not banking on it, but this is, as you said, if it's going to be any time, it is going to be this year. Will. That'll do it for us talking Clippers preview. Thank you for coming on and chatting with us about the LA Clippers. Of course, you host uh, Locked On Clippers five days a week with your co-host, Charles. So if you want to hear more about the Clippers, go and listen over there. Thank you, Will, for, uh, for coming on. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Love talking Clippers. And that will do it for today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you're here on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Ring the notification bell so you're never going to miss an episode. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.